Okay, it's sunny today, but it's actually really windy. It makes it a little harder to fly the drone at times because you have to do it when there's not huge gusts of winds. And what's going on today? I guess with that in mind with the drone, it's kind of interesting reading this one where it talks about things like counter drone tech and the possible obstacles in regards to using these types of things. This one says counter drone technologies could enhance safety and security but may have unintended effects. Uncrewed aircraft systems or drones have a variety of important uses from search and rescue to cinematography. But this technology can also cause problems. For example, in January 2019, a drone was spotted near Newark Liberty International Airport halting all air traffic activity for over an hour. Counter drone technology can detect and when needed, jam, capture or disable unauthorized drones. I guess with the picture just showing you examples on when you would want to say, I guess, use counter drone tech. For example, someone entering into unauthorized or restricted airspace or someone, like it says here, drone smuggles drugs across the border. And so what do they have to say? It says, how does counter drone technology work? Counter drone technologies generally fall in two categories, detection and mitigation. Detection technologies include infrared devices to track heat signatures, radio frequency, detection for signals from a drone's remote controller, and acoustic methods to recognize the unique sounds of drone motors. Mitigation technologies are those that can repel or intercept a drone. For example, interference signals can jam the communications between the drone and its operator. Other technologies can try to net the drone, shoot it down, or disable it using trained hawks. I read that before, but ultimately they said it wasn't practical, I guess just in terms of the cost and so forth. It's kind of interesting reading what they say the challenges are. For example, with this, they kind of imply, well, for one, it doesn't detect things accurately 100%. And this probably happens a lot where people mistaken things for a quote drone when it isn't. For example, it says detection systems may overlook a drone because of interference or mistake a bird for a drone and mitigation systems may have limited range or fall against quick or unpredictable drones. It makes me curious with these systems, is that even possible for it to mix up, I guess, something mechanical like a drone versus like a bird in that sense in terms of whatever radar system they're using? Because I would imagine, don't these things track things based on things like signals? For example, like the aeroscope and all that? And it says another challenge is unintended consequences. For example, counter drone technology may collect personal information or interfere with nearby communications. Systems that disable drones can lead to damage from errant projectiles or falling drones. Therefore, counter drone technology is usually customized to meet a specific purpose and location. I guess that raises the question too. Do you think, let's just say, an average individual should be able to use stuff like this freely? Or no, should it always be reserved for things like law enforcement? And the last thing I read, which is kind of interesting, it just dealt with a piece of software where apparently you can just take pictures of items, for example, I guess, with your phone. And then with that, this will turn things into 3D objects pretty, I guess, quickly. It's kind of interesting. This one says, introducing reality scan, now in limited beta. Today, we're happy to introduce Reality Scan, a free 3D scanning app developed in collaboration with Quixel that turns smartphone photos into high fidelity 3D models in the most accessible way possible. So it's kind of cool. Again, it seems like just based on their materials, you could just go out, take a picture of something like, I guess, a furniture, which they show there, bring it into, I guess, the system, and it'll automatically convert it into, I guess, a 3D scan. That's kind of cool when you think about it. And with that, the cool thing is you can use those assets in various, I guess, applications. Because it says here, the power and simplicity of reality capture in your pocket. Capturing real world assets for digital experiences has traditionally been complicated, technical, and labor intensive. Now in limited beta, Reality Scan takes what people love about reality capture, fast and easy 3D scanning, and puts it into the hands of anyone with a smartphone. So imagine that, just for example, let's just say somebody wants like a 3D model of a squirrel or something like that. And if I can get really close to them all the time, you can automatically turn that into a 3D object, put it into some kind of, I don't know, application, maybe a game, for example. That would be kind of neat, actually. Thank <laughs> you.
Hey, see you guys later.